Hey there, stackers. Welcome to Wednesday and uh, a fun Facebook Live, YouTube Live session in the basement. I'm Joe Saul Sihai from Stacking Benjamins. I'm the creator and co host of the podcast and of stuff like this. And I'm certain, I'm certainly, certainly happy that you can be here today. I was up late last night. We got some great direction. And there have been so many changes here lately. You would think that for a show that has, now we're celebrating episode 1053, that the podcast would be kind of a well-oiled machine. And while I would say that uh, our team is doing a fantastic job, we're still re, you know, we're still tweaking. We're still working. And uh, a mentor of mine said a long time ago that, I'm, I listened to shows from a year ago and I'm embarrassed by the shows we made a year ago. And I'm hoping like hell that we're embarrassed by the shows that we're making today a year from now. Um, and certainly we've made some, uh, we've made some big changes. In fact, one thing we've been doing a lot of lately is playing really the, the best 20 minutes of our interviews, uh, from our podcasts. Um, we've been doing, uh, those, but, but, but I, I'm having these longer conversations and we're adding those to the YouTube channel. So if you're watching us on YouTube, you can also see a great discussion with today's guest, uh, NHL commentator, Stu Grimson, um, who had a great hockey, hockey career, but we're not here to talk about hockey today. We are here in just a minute. We're going to have the scholarship shell scholarship shark herself, man. I can't talk. Uh, here with us, Pam Andrews is back. And if you know Pam, you know she's going to be able to answer every single college planning question that you have. No pressure on Pam, but I'm not going to do it. She is. So more pressure on her, less pressure on me. <laughs> and I'm, I'm laughing at her because I can see her down here and she's uh, sweating already. No, not at all. Uh, uh, let's say hi to people saying hi to us. Hey, Chibali, how are you? Glad you're back here with us. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Karen is here with us. Karen, our show producer. Uh, look at that horse. Man, Karen is in Montana and she always sends pictures this time of year. And I'm like, man, I wish I was there. And then she sends me pictures in January and I'm like, thank God I'm not there. So, uh, uh, Scott, guess what? Good news. Um, you, sir, uh, have her right here, right here today. We're going to pass along Pam stuff because we are super excited. The, 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 uh, the sign up, if you just signed up, the sign up period ends on Saturday and you'll be getting stuff. You'll be getting stuff from Pam and her team, team them. Paul is here. Hey, Paul, glad Paul is here. Paul's working on a project that he keeps reminding me that we're working on. And I have had 50 things between me and, and, and that project. So glad, glad that we got Paul with us today. If you're with us, all those people are on Facebook, except Scott, Scott is on YouTube. So we've got uh, people on YouTube, people on Facebook. All right. Uh, while we're waiting for just a, just a few more people to arrive, I got just a couple other things happening here. Friday shows are now live. Uh, you're going to hear, if you listen to the podcast on Friday of this week, you're going to hear, Hey Hank, we're going to hear, um, uh, us perform a live show and you can be a part of it. I love this platform. So Fireside is a platform created by Mark Cuban and a w- back by Mark Cuban, created by a woman, a woman named uh, uh, Fallon Fetemi. And Fallon was one of the uh, youngest people hired at Google, uh, worked with YouTube to help bring YouTube up. And now she has this platform for podcast creators where we can do it almost like it's the radio. You can be in the quote auditorium or you can be listening anywhere where where you're listening. You can be listening on Instagram or on Facebook or on Twitter or any of the social media channels that we have. You can listen to us there. But if you're in the auditorium, the cool thing is you can be a part of the show. And if you listen to Friday's show, you're gonna hear two stackers that help us along with Karen, our producer, that help us with the trivia. Uh, but if there have been times too, where you're listening to us talking and you're, you're just yelling at your device because you want us to talk about something different or you want to see, you've got an idea, you got something that you want to talk about with regard to the topic, you can be on the show. So that is, that is definitely, um, going to be a lot of fun. We record those Mondays at 5 PM Eastern. So set your calendar, You'll see in our Facebook group and also if you follow me on Twitter and uh, also the uh, stacker emails, 
you'll see how to get a hold of us uh, there because the app is not the apps in beta. People have told me already it's a little hard to get to because you have to sign up for a couple different things. You got to answer some questions. It's closed, but once you're in, then uh, then you're in. So uh, we're super happy that we're starting there. And in about a month when it's open, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to be a part of our studio audience. So that's going to be that's going to be super fun. Um, what else? Uh, just a couple other things. You can listen to us on smart speakers now by just saying, play the Stacking Benjamin show. And I won't say the name of your device, but if you just say it, you'll be able to, you will have smart speakers going off all over the place. I could do that for fun, but we won't. So uh, uh, play the Stacking Benjamin show. You can play us there. And last, we've had a lot of people asking us about my book coming out December 28th. And thank you to everybody who's pre-ordered it because for any author, pre-orders are so important to the um, uh, uh, all the lists, whether it's the, you know, there's the Amazon bestseller list, there's the Wall Street Journal list that's here, and there's the New York Times list. So it's stacked. It's your super serious guide to modern money management. Um, and Emily, my co-author and I, we just got our... Um, we just got like the proof. So, and it's still in a PDF, but all the illustrations are in there. There's a ton of illustrations, a ton of pictures. So if you're not a big reader, you, you, you're going to have fun with, have fun with our book. And our book is meant to be fun while you learn how to stack some Benjamins. And thanks to our friend Gertrude, our room mom, social media manager. There's the, there's the link. All right. Enough of that. You're not here to hear about the book. You're not here to hear about fireside and live shows. You're here for Pam Andrews, the scholarship shark, and we're going to deliver her right now. You guys ready? This is going to be super duper fun. She's here on her way. There she is. Pam Andrews is here. Yes. With, with the glasses. Is, <laughs> you know Pam is ready to go when she's wearing the glasses. Yes, ready to go. For and, sure. Always ready to go. Yes. And for Scott, we just sent, I messaged Allie and I'm like, huh. So there was like a, a minor glitch in the system. And for some of you who even registered on day one, you may have experienced that hiccup where the uh, form didn't go through to capture your student's email. So just check your email and... Um, once we get your student's email, we'll manually put you in the system so you can get started. So there are two components to that. The online piece where your student can get started right away. And then there's the live piece as well. So you haven't missed anything with the live. So the, just, the, just want the, to take care of that real fast. Yeah. <laughs> we got that housekeeping for Scott. I've got one piece of housekeeping for Chibali, which is, is the book launch date only for the U.S.? Can we get it on Audible in Dubai? The answer is, I don't know. Second answer is because it's Penguin Random House, the biggest publisher in the United States. I'm assuming the answer is yes. Uh, I will know a lot more tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm in a big meeting with, I think there's like 14 people, Pam, to talk wow. about. Uh, That's exciting. Marketing plan. Yeah. Well, it's exciting and intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but about the marketing plan of the book. And so if you're with us again next time, Chibali, uh, ask me that same, same uh, question because um, – because I will know in about a week what's going on. But Pam, this is this is something strange from the last time you and I talked. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks, okay, it's summertime, right? Kids on vacation. I'm I'm passing Cheryl and I went for a walk mm -hmm. down at the park yesterday, and there's kids fishing all over the place and spending time, having fun, celebrating summer. But you told me when we talked last that July is a huge month for scholarships. Tell me about that. It, it really is. Um, and it's, it's great because a lot of times you have those last minute students or, you know, maybe students who have applied and now things are settling down a bit. The dust is settling in, you know, school is over. And so you have that natural break. And for some reason, July is one of the times of the calendar year where there are plenty of scholarships. And the, the best thing about that too is I find that those private scholarship sponsors do a really quick turnaround time. So they you know award right away and often students can get those checks in August or September at the latest. And so the, the nice thing is it's a big you know, scholarship time right before school starts for incoming students or even current college students who are taking that break. 
But what I find is that students aren't thinking about it. They're like, Whew, school's over. I'm going to enjoy summer. I'm going to relax. I'm going to work, you know, hang out with my friends. And so they may not be thinking about applying for scholarships um, during that time. So that's kind of the, the upside and the downside. The upside is there are plenty of scholarships during that time of the month, you know, time of the year, the calendar yeah. year. But the downside is it's really you know, you, you, your you, students tend to turn their academic brains off and just kind of relax and make that transition, especially if you have an, uh, a graduating senior. You know, I've got one of those this year. I had one last year, one again this year. And they're just, you know, kind of enjoying life and just sure. glad to be off the, the computer for Zoom and, you know, and hanging out with their friends a little bit. So, yeah. So July is a big scholarship month. That's, and and it's, it's mostly private scholarships. Correct. Yep. So scholarships through private sponsors, which go with you no matter which school you go to, typically they award it to the student. There are times when they award it to the student payable to the school. Um, so you have to send that check directly to the school. Um, but most of them are going directly to the student, which is nice because you can still use it for college related expenses, but maybe things like a new laptop or books or travel to and from home. So, um, you know, it just depends on the the scholarship sponsor and what they require the money to be used for, but yeah, private, the private money. Now for private money, there's this form that people, and I'm going to just make sure this is one-on-one for everybody who's hanging out with us, this form called the FAFSA form. Do I still need the FAFSA form for private money? So no, you don't need it for private money. Um, you do. So today we're, we're getting close to the, the actual federal deadline on the FAFSA. Just, I'm just going to kind of, Throw that out there real fast when I'm talking about it. So schools have their deadlines, which are typically earlier than the federal deadline. But the federal deadline is uh, June 30th every year. So it's going to shut down and then they'll open again October 1. So if for some reason you did not, I mean, it's highly unlikely that you, your student or your family did not complete the FAFSA. But if you did not, you have a few days to go ahead and get it in. Um, and it shouldn't take long, like an hour or so at the most, but you want to go ahead and get that in. So that really determines the institutional aid, the federal aid that's given through the school. So schools have a pool of money and typically it's on a first come first serve basis. So schools, oh. yeah, they may still be awarding money. Let's say, you know, they've extended invitations. Let's say they have 500 sp slots. They send out acceptances to a thousand students and of those thousand, 300 say yes. And so now there's, you know, there may be extra money. So there may be in some rare cases, additional federal aid. Um, but that is on a first come first serve with the school. So it's better to get that in right a little after October one, um, you know, each year, your child's senior year and, and until they graduate. So as soon as, as soon as you can, Absolutely. that first come first serve basis is what trips me up every year because mm -hmm. I think, wow, that, that deadline's over long ago, but I think it's just that general rule of thumb that you want to get it in quick because the second they get the FAFSA, they'll start awarding money. Correct. That's correct. Okay. They're awarding the, um, the money that's, you know, given to the, the particular schools. Correct. But there's going to be some people then here saying that they think it's too late then, Pam. No, you know, that <laughs> yeah. So it's never, it's never too late. Um, there are scholarships that students can apply for all year round. Again, there are times when there's like nice peaks with more scholarships, but it's never too late. And even when your student is in school, if they're not fully covered, they should still be applying for scholarships. So um, it's it's never too late to apply for the money. The um, and well, and another thing I think is uh, even if you don't get scholarships, uh, federal loans, which are generally at a low interest rate. I mean, you want to have a plan, but because they're at a low interest rate, you still got to have the FAFSA for those, I think, too, right? That's correct. Yes, that's yeah. exactly correct. So you're subsidized where the federal government is paying the interest while your student is in school at, as opposed, and also the unsubsidized, but those are, you know, if you have to get the loan, those are the ones that you want. And the only way to get it is by completing the FAFSA, which is why sometimes families will say, oh, we make too much. We won't qualify. Fill it out. Like it's better to fill it out and not need it. And even work study, federal work study is driven off the FAFSA. And your student may decide to be a TA, a, t a teacher's assistant or work in the, um, I don't know, the coffee shop on campus or, you know, and so that way, you know, they've, if they have apply and they qualify and they get the money, then it's available. And then you can always choose not to use it, but it's better to go ahead and complete the paperwork. Um, 
when before it's due. Guys, I'm going to keep asking Pam questions until you have some. So <laughs> if you've got questions that you want answered, don't wait for me to take a break because I'm just going to keep going. I'm watching your, your, your questions. Our friend Paul being a smart butt asking if there's anywhere <laughs> to color in my book. No, uh, the funny thing is, Paul, there's, there is a page. You, I, I know Paul's being funny. There is a page that were for you to color. There's a certificate at the end of the book. If you finish everything that my mom has signed it and Emily and I have signed it that you finish the book and you can color that if you want. So we, we know, you know, Paul wants to color, <laughs> but, but if you, but if you kid in Paul, Paul, right. Paul, I know Paul. Yeah. If you, if you, yeah. That sounds like Paul, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, the uh, definitely not Shireen. That is Paul right there. Um, so when, when, uh, when we think about scholarships, this, uh, this, this, uh, uh, the baseline, of course, is to try to get a scholarship. You mentioned something, the coffee shop on campus. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about that, about work study. Cause from, you know, sometimes I'm like, Hey, I could do a work study program. And then I work this job and it goes toward paying my tuition. But even if I don't do work study and I take a job that might be better for my career, that could go to, to tuition. So I, I don't know. I've always been conflicted about work study, but you know more about this than me. Should I take a work study uh, program or should I forego that and just go get a job? So it, it just depends. Um, you know, it's better. So when you complete the FAFSA, if you're eligible, you know, they'll tell you what the dollar amount is and you do have to, you know, apply for the job, work the job, and then find out how are they going to disperse the money. Is it once a month? Are they applying it to your tuition? Typically they give you the paycheck, which is nice. Um, but it, it depends. There's, there's one study and I, and I hate quoting studies when I don't, I can't remember, but I was, I was literally at a conference and they were talking about students who actually do work study tend to, uh, and I'm probably fudging this a bit, making it up, but basically on-campus jobs tend to be better for students than the off-campus jobs that the students tend to do oh. better and they have that sense of community. So, um, but sometimes, you know, internships, um, uh, you know, through your school's uh, career office may be better, may be better in terms of the pay as well as, you know, or if the pay is about the same, the opportunity for what it is you want to major in. So you, the student just has to, to weigh all the options, but it's good to have options. At the end of the day, you want choices. I think that's the most important part. Yeah. Uh, Amanda hanging out with us on YouTube uh, has this, this question. We have an upcoming senior in high school. Okay. This is the year, Amanda. What should we be doing at this point in time? Great question. I, I love that question. So this is their last summer. Um, they're now rising senior last summer. So try to get as much completed now as possible. One of the things that the big thing right now, two big things, actually. So one, you want to understand your family's financial position. You want to do an estimate on your um, expected family contribution so that you know what you're going to be expected to pay. So there are no surprises in the fall. And um, there's a link. It's the FAFSA forecaster. So it's F FASA and then number four and then C-A-S-T-E-R dot org, I believe, um, where you can do an estimate and you can always do the paper form and estimate um, if, if you like. But that's really good because a lot of times families or, or students start building their school list and not knowing what the family's expected to pay. And so when you understand what your EFC or your expected family contribution is early on, whether you can pay it or not, it's, it's just good to know what that number is, because then that should really drive how you build your school list. Um, and so what your student. So that's what you can do as the parent. I don't leave that part. of. I mean, I with my kids and I recommend to families, you know, you, the parents should do it, but have the conversation with your students. So have them involved. But, you know, you need to then say, OK, the school is expecting us to pay. Uh, 15,000 a year and we're able, we have enough money in a 529 where we're able to do 10,000 a year. So, um, you know, so we, we need to figure out the, you know, kind of like if, if it exceeds that, what would that look like? And then, then you're building your school list based on that. So of course you want to make sure it's a good academic fit that, you know, this school is going to lead to your career goals. Cause even if it's the best in terms of financial fit, 
if it's, you know, if it's not a place where you're going to end up, you know, graduating and landing your, your job, what difference does it make? But, you know, all those other things being equal, focus on the money. And so what your student can then do is take a look at the essay prompts now. There's nothing that says, oh, you can't start writing your essays. Do it now. Again, you know, they have to turn their academic brains back on, but start writing the essays as they're building their list of schools and get that finished um, so that in the fall, you know, it's just maybe tweaking it and, you know, a few other pieces of their application, gathering their references, um, uh, you know, putting in all their uh, extracurriculars and volunteering and all that good stuff. But the other thing you want to do, too, is not just look at the um, uh, essays that you're, you would need to write or the student needs to write, but also take a look at the scholarships at the school level as well as the deadlines. And here's why this is important. Um, that many schools have earlier deadlines for money than for the application. So I know one school has an October 15th deadline for their largest scholarship, but their actual early action deadline is, I think it's like November 15th. And then their next deadline is December 1st. So if your student is just focused on admissions and not money, you're going to miss the money. And I think that's really important. So as they're building their school list, their list of schools, just simply go to the website, whatever the schools, typically whatever, whatever dot edu, or, you know, they'll find that. And then either go to the little search bar, the magnifying glass, you know, and type in financial aid or type in scholarships and see what comes up. And then, or just simply go to the financial aid tab and look and see what is it, what are those deadlines? What do I need to do? Are you writing essays? Are you um, submitting uh, like so many extracurricular activities? Are, are, do you have to have additional references? Whatever that is, take the summer to get all that in place now, because when fall hits, especially as the country opens up more, you know, students are going to get back to the busy, you know, football games and socials and the fall festival and, you know, all the stuff that happens that you do your, while you're in high school, especially your senior year. And so it's important to use the summer because you have time, you have those three months to really spread it out and get it done. Uh, 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 I'm going to take Leslie's question here as a follow up. And Chibali, I see your question, but Leslie's goes right along with exactly what we're talking about right now. Where are the essay prompts, the individual school or the common app? Both. Well, it depends. So most schools are on the common app. They're about 900 schools. So they're close to 4,000 colleges and universities in the U.S. 900 of those, about 900 are on the common app. But so you can do one of two things. If you Now, your student can register right now for the common app. Um, and the Common App is just simply commonapp.org. What the Common App is, and that's a great question, it's um, a membership organization where, to simplify the application process for students, by completing one application, it can go to multiple schools. So you still have to pay the fees for those different schools, and there may be some additional pieces, but common pieces such as your name, your address, your email. Oh, you don't got to do the redundant paperwork. You don't have to. Exactly. <laughs> and your one personal statement will go out to all those schools, which is really nice. So um, you can go to the school's website to see if they're on the Common App. Um, there's also the Coalition app, which is just like the Common App. It's a common application. And then for Texas folks or students applying in Texas, there's the Apply Texas um, and then there's also the HBCU Common App. So there are multiple common applications like the Common App. That one just happens to be called the Common App. But you can start with the school because they should be doing the research on the school's website anyway, looking up programs, you know, um, finding out the deadline. So just go right to the school's website and it'll tell you if they take Common App, their own application, coalition, um, sometimes a combination, and you can get it there. If it's the Common App, the prompts are already out. It's the same prompts. Um, and prompt just means questions, the same question, but if not, then they, they have their information right there on their website. And I find that they don't put a lot of effort into changing the questions. The questions are pretty much the same year after year. So it's not like if your student starts working on it now, there's going to be a change, uh, August one and say, Oh, I've worked on this essay and now I can't <laughs> use it. That's not, it's highly unlikely. So it, it's, it's too much work. So, um, yeah, so they can go right to the, I would start with the school's website. And then if they're 
Common App, if you find, you know, let's say your student has seven schools on their list and five of the seven have the Common App and one is coalition and one is their own, just go ahead and start working on that Common App. And chances are you can, or you, your student, your student can still use that essay some way on their other applications. It's not like you just have to scrap it and start from scratch. So let's go back to Chibali's question then, which is this one. Is there, is there a resource that highlights all the available options for scholarships? I remember Pam, when I was in school, there was the Peterson's guide to colleges, right? Yes. That, that had everything. I know for a while, fast web was the big thing, but mm -hmm. I've heard from some places, maybe it was you that, man, there's a lot of junk there. You got to wade through, like, is there, it, are these resources exist anymore? Yeah, so I, I like, a, a you have to have a combo because there are pros and cons to all of it. So I, I do like FastWeb and I do like, so FastWeb.com and then scholarships with an S, your, your websites, your scholarship databases, um, because there are times when they will, you know, by you putting your information and in, they will post some really good scholarships that you may not have found. But then there's just the good old fashioned, I have it right here, I'm going to show you this. I love this. Actually, I get these like every year. So this one just happened to be on top, but I've got you 18. You use that to work out. I know. <laughs> that thing is, it is thick. It is thick. It's super thick. But the ultimate scholarship book, you can get it right on Amazon. It comes out every year. The new ones come out every July. So you can go ahead and order it now, or you can wait a few days or like a week or so. And the 2022 edition will be out. Um, you only need this, I have to tell you, right, you only need it like once every three years because they really only update it about that often. And then inside with each scholarship, they say, um, you know, they give you the website and a code to visit to get updated information. So I like this. Now, the downside of this is you have to thumb through it. However, there may be things about you that, you know, the database just doesn't pick up, you know, that, um, you know, some really unique attribute about you or your family um, that you read and you come across like, oh yeah, this, I'm out totally eligible for this. I could apply for that. So you, you have to do, it's not an either or, you have to do all of it. You know, there's no one place that has all of it um, for, you know, just the local or e even the national. So you have to do a combination. And then for local, so those are national, national scholarships, right? Like because they're, they're designed to reach the masses. Sure. But for your, your local, I love the guidance counselor. You can't beat your local guidance counselor. So make it a point to pay them a visit and ask, you know, where do you keep your scholarships? Is it in a binder? You'd be surprised. Some are still doing three ring binders with paper. Um, is it on a website? Is there a bulletin board? So how, how do you get this information out? Are they sharing it on Naviance? Are they sending out email blasts in a, you know, parenting email? Some schools actually do a, a, a compendium of scholarships. So you just need to know, so you know upfront. And that's a good question to ask now so that you're prepared um, in the fall when it starts to hit. I know also just parents' uh, organizations, right? Mm -hmm. Like yep. whatever organizations mom or dad belong to, those can be good. I know my dad was uh, a General Motors uh, employee and GM had a scholarship as an example. Yep. Yeah, you'd be surprised. I mean, where you bank at, at your local credit union. Sometimes you don't even have to bank at the credit union. If it's just in your neighborhood, you know, they may do it. That's like in our area. You don't even have to be a member of the credit union, but they award like 10 $1,000 scholarships to area high school students. So, and, you know, and of course the guidance counselors in our area are the ones who get the word out about that. Um, but those are, are great. Sororities and fraternities are another great place. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Yeah. 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 I hadn't even thought of that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brian's got a question for you, Pam. Uh, can you comment on uh, finding funding for working professionals? like to return to school for advanced degrees man this is this is great yeah so work so working professionals advanced degrees start with your employer because you're you're already working many employers would do tuition reimbursement so you can't beat that um i did that when i was working on my um my master's a long time ago um and all i had to do was maintain a get a c so you know i paid for it and they would reimburse me that's a great place um check with the school's financial aid office to let them know you're, you know, an older working, uh, returning to school or um, advancing your degree and see what they have. And then also professional organizations are really good. So if you're, um, you know, 
I don't know, going into a certain profession or vocation, check with the your national professional organization at the oh. national level and then also the regional level to see if they offer money because sometimes they do, especially for, you know, fields where they want people. And so it's in their best interest to help <laughs> subsidize, you know, defray some of that cost so they can get folks in, you know, in that vocation. So I would also think places. schools being as competitive for those types of programs that uh, those professional organizations might have specific schools that they align themselves with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the thing that I want to ask, which is related to Brian's question is you and I have talked about before many times about how kids will, uh, and parents will apply for scholarships when, when junior is a freshman, right? Mm -hmm. And then they don't get anything. So then sophomore year, they fill out the FAFSA kind of half-heartedly. Junior year, they stop completely. And you've said over and over, that's a mistake because junior year and senior year, companies really get involved because now you're done with like freshman-itis and playing around. And now you probably have a direction in mind and they want to recruit you. So they offer these, they offer more money to juniors and seniors. Is that the same thing for Brian if he's talking about advanced degrees? In other words, is there, is the... If he is, do companies look for people through advanced degree programs? Do they use that for like, is it more private money or is it public money more? It, it, it could vary. So here's another thing that Brian could do. If he knows, especially if he's making a, a career shift or advancing his skills and there's a company or two um, where he's interested, I've seen this with Google. I, I remember sharing once, I think it was on our Instagram or someplace where Google was giving money for students to learn a specific skill. And I thought, wow, this is great. Yeah. And so, because they needed people. Um, so if you know, maybe some in the industry or companies in the industry, I, reach out to their HR department and, and inquire um, because there may be internship opportunities as well as maybe money to help uh, pay for it in order to get, you know, to, again, to get the workers. You're saying if you're targeting specific companies, just think Correct. about companies I you would. want to work for and go right I there. Would. I would for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's great. Yeah. I hadn't, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gertrude from our team has a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Thoughts or advice on letters of recommendation, letters of recommendation help. Are you going to have to yes. write those? Yep, for sure. So yeah, you will have your senior, your student will have to get them. Um, if they haven't, it hadn't thought about it before school let out, because by now most students are out of school. Um, you can do one of two things, begin to think about, definitely think about who it is you want to write your recommendation. And then, you know, at the mid summer, because sometimes teachers check their emails. So you could reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm applying to college in the fall. I would love for you to write my recommendation or the, it, top of the year, um, begin to ask for it. So sometimes, uh, guide, so guidance counselors typically have to do recommendations, but theirs are more a kind of a canned approach. You know, they don't really get to know the student, which is weird at any time of school asks to me, in my opinion, when they're asking for the guidance counselor's recommendation, cause I'm like, most guidance counselors really don't know the students. Um, but what you want to think of, you want to have at least two solid academic references, recommendations, as well as a character. So from a coach, from an employer where you volunteered, um, if you were part of a club. So maybe it's a teacher and it wasn't uh, your teacher. They didn't teach an academic subject, but they were the advisor for a particular club where you led or you you know participated. You can think about that. So be ready to think about like two solid academic references and then um, a good character reference as well. And some of that may overlap like your math teacher, maybe you tutored or helped some of the younger students or struggling students in the class and they can speak to your empathy and you know um, how you go above and beyond things like that but you definitely want solid academic references because schools at the end of the day want to make sure you can handle the coursework when they're when looking at your application when i went to get my character reference pam all they wrote was yep he's a character and i'm like <laughs> no that's not what i, not what I want it's not what i'm looking for <laughs> uh, 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 
th this is interesting because people think about college. We're going to get philosophical here with Chabali. Um, we uh, people think about college and they think about you know the necessity of a degree. Uh, we think about um, about uh, like uh, Brian was talking about about maybe moving up the pay scale with advanced degrees. Chabali says contrarian view. Does having a scholarship give you the freedom to pursue a passion project? Meaning. If I can get a scholarship to learn how to do X, Y, Z thing that maybe doesn't pay, does that, is that, is that uh, something you should pursue? Yeah. So it, it's one of those, it depends, you know, it, it, it really, it really depends. Sometimes there's um, one, it's, it's the Bonner Foundation, B-O-N-N-E-R, and they typically award in September and that one you can't be, that's a great one if you're slightly younger, because I think you can't be above 18 or 19, something like that. But it's, if, if you have a student, a young person who is into the environment, so maybe they want to pursue environmental sciences and, um, um, you know, they, they have done something creative with that. That is, I, I think it's $10,000 and you can do one of two wow. things. You can, yeah, you can use it for school or you can use it for your project. They give you that kind of flexibility. And so, and I'm gonna pull up the link. Am I able to drop it in or probably not? Uh, but um, yeah, cause I just thought of that. Um, I think so. You know what, you can put it in the chat. You see the chat okay. up in there. I think you can, yep. can you type it in the chat? Yep, it's bonner.org, B-O-N-N-E-R yeah. dot O-R-G. Or Gertrude's yep. got you. Awesome, yeah, so um, yeah. And so that's, that's a, oh, where'd I go? I lost you looking for another, there we go. And so. <laughs> You didn't lose me, but I was starting with another tag. We are here right? with you. Right. So it, it just depends. So um, the key is you have to read not just the eligibility, like who can apply for this, but how can you use the money? And um, and you have to use it the way they say use it. So in that case, absolutely. You know, you've got a thing for the, the environment or, you know, you've got some creative project that you've started and you can you want to expand it and you don't want to use that money for school. You can continue to do that. So. Uh, uh, we've got there. She, there we go. We have it both up on YouTube and on Facebook. If you're hanging out there, you'll see bonner.org. Oh, um, right. <laughs> if you, uh, 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 we've got uh, Pam for a few more minutes, we can hang out for a few more. But, so if you've got a question, bring those now. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to ask about, um, about younger kids. That's the one area mm -hmm. we haven't talked about. We talked about advanced degrees, going back to school. We've talked about uh, seniors right now, but people with somebody who's, you know, maybe a freshman in high school or even younger, what type of stuff should we be doing to prepare besides shoving barrels of money into a 529 plan? Yeah. So um, in addition to that, <laughs> you know, um, cause that, that is important. Um, so a couple things I would say, have them explore their interests, you know, let them do what they love to do and, and just give them that freedom to do it and to really just try it out and see what they like, what they don't like. But in terms of the money, sometimes families will wonder, you know, can I start this early applying for scholarships? So yes and no. I, I think the bigger question is, can we get money? So typically they're not called scholarships when they're younger, they're called cash awards, prizes. And so if your local bank again has a contest, by all means, you know, anytime your student can do something and win money, do it. Whether it's writing an essay, drawing a picture, whatever it is. And you can use that money depending upon what they say. If you're able to just put it aside and, you know, begin to save for college and let them know we're saving this for college, that that's a good thing. So it's important to look for contests, cash awards, or prizes when they're younger. That's that, Those are the terms you're going to see. It's not likely you're going to see the word um, scholarships for like a fifth grader or a sixth grader um, because the scholarships are typically directly used to, should be used for the cost related to going to school. Um, but I also though, I think it's good just to expose kids to the collegiate environment. So any opportunity you get, if they have an older sibling and you're doing college visits, take the younger ones along. If there's a football game, um, you know, let's say if you're close to a college town, go to the game, you know, you know, kind of make that your Friday night hangout. Um, if there are museums or special exhibits or special lectures or camps, you know, summer camps, exposure, 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 even 
I did this with my kids. I had them write their older cousins um, who were at college when my kids were, were younger. And it was fun because we always had one who would send back really cool merchandise, like little t-shirts and stickers and all kinds of fun things. But even that, just saying, hey, you know, cousin Collins and we call everybody cousin, like cousin Colin is in college. That's a lot. That's a mouthful. And they would just write on like, you know, and he would write back, which was great. And that just let them know, like, you've got family members who do this. This is kind of what we do. And this is the expectation. So I think it's really important to have the conversations, you know, when you're in the, the car, when you're sitting to eat and when you're, you know, just kind of raise that level of expectation that, you know, beyond high school, what is it you like to do and what's the best path to get there? And if it's college, then let's, you know, this is, you know, let's work towards that. So um, I just think, being future and, and, and talking about their future as parents and exposure is, is key. And yeah. I'm telling you, college campuses have a lot of really nice things. Like we're not too far from a, a, our, our university and we've done plays, my husband and I for date nights, the kids and I, you know, we'll do hockey games and sports that we would never do. And then we have an ice skating rink. We've got, you know, gone ice skating there. They have a, um, a farm and we go there for ice cream for their, uh, cream, yeah. their creamery. So <laughs> We're always on that college campus, always. So it's it's fun. It's a fun thing to do as a family. That's good though. I was never on a college campus, and there was a lot of that fear, just fear of the of the experience. And um, I remember thinking it was a whole different world. And for my kids, I feel like it was much more comfortable because Cheryl and I would go. Yeah. You know, we do the same thing. Go to go to colleges all the time, and it didn't feel like such a big transition. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think for a lot of kids, that transition freshman year is 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 very difficult. Yeah. Um, anything we didn't talk about that we should before we talk about the program? Um. Yeah, I, I love the question. I mean, it, it was covered. You know, what what should my senior be doing, a rising senior be doing right now? Um, take advantage because you don't get time back. So, uh, kind of along that lines with even younger students for ninth, tenth, and eleventh graders. So, if you're going into the ninth, the tenth, and the eleventh, the one thing I do want to say is grades matter. Like what you do or what your student does, those first three years are really important uh, because when they're applying in the fall the school is looking back at their first three years. That's what they see. So don't, you know, don't kind of say, oh, well, you know, I had a rough start, a rocky start and I'll make it up by my senior year. No, like, you know, it's, it's important to start well, get help if you need it. There's always support, tutors, meet with the teachers, whatever it takes to, you know, bring those grades up and to do your, your best. But um, those first three years are really important. The, um, let's, let, let's dive into our program and, mm -hmm. and by way of doing that to tell, uh, everybody kind of what we've done, we, so I used to create some curriculum on my own and on our own stacking Benjamins used to create a bunch of stuff on our own. And then I realized that number one, I really like making a podcast that I think is a good podcast and that is helpful for people. And I like doing that a lot, which is why we do it three times a week. And I realized then, and it was actually, this is funny. You're going to love this, Pam. I don't know if I've told you this, but it was on a trip to Disney that I realized that a lot of these performers at Disney that you see and a lot of the things you see at Disney are not Disney. They're partnerships with best in class people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so, uh, when, when we were looking around for, uh, partners and exactly what would be something that's the stacking Benjamin's brand. And let me tell you guys what I think that is. I think it's something where you're not just paying a fee and somebody does it for you which you're going to see more of that from us. We're debuting something else new in the fall that has nothing to do with scholarships, but it's going to be very similar. I think, I think there's value in knowing how it works. Even if you're working with a financial planner, knowing the pieces of your financial plan makes sense. And having that person to teach you the financial plan makes sense because like I used to tell my clients when I was a financial planner, Pam, if I got hit by a bus and you just delegate it to me, you're no better off. Yeah. Right. So, so really a financial planner is just to help you speed along your knowledge. And so doing it yourself and, 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 and not free, you will never find me partner with anybody, uh, where the program is free. And, and don't get me wrong. It's not about me trying to bleed money out of my listeners' pockets. I don't need to do that. Don't want to do that. <laughs> but what I've always found is that if there's skin in the game, if you actually pay a fee, you, you, you do the work. 
you, yeah. you, you value it. I'm, I'm taking an MIT class right now. It is super, but expensive. It is so expensive. And I'll tell you, it's a phenomenal course. It is just, it's a, and, and part of the reason it's phenomenal is because I'm in there working on it this whole six week period, this whole executive education thing. So, um, uh, and I went to that one and there's much cheaper courses than MIT, but why would I, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I go to somebody that knows what they're doing? So that's who we want to partner with. And that's why, uh, I'm so pleased when Pam said that she would sponsor uh, or that this sponsor with this, she would partner with us because of the fact that, that she's so good at what she does really we're sponsoring her. Um, so I'm, I'm su was super excited. She said, yes, the people have gone through the program already. We've heard great stuff from, we had a lot of people on the waiting list. I know this time to, to, to open it up. Uh, we're going to be closing this on, and we just said this, is it Friday or Saturday? It's actually Saturday. So we're in, we're less than three days. So it's like two days and the clock is ticking like yeah. two days and 20 hours. Something. And let's so. dive in a little bit, Pam, here in the last few minutes to ab about how it works, because sure. if you're the, if it's you or if it's your child, Pam's not going to do it for you. Pam's going to guide your child on finding scholarships. And there's a lot of life lessons here. So tell everybody yep. about how it works, Pam. Absolutely. So I teach your student how to find, apply, and win scholarships. So when it comes to finding, um, the skills that you acquire with finding scholarships are the same skills to find internships, to find study abroad opportunities, to find your first job. You know, it's it's a transferable skill. So, um, so when your student learns how to find and where to search for the national, regional, and local scholarships, they are um, getting a little bit more than just finding scholarships. But with the finding scholarships, then getting organized and building the process, the whole machine, so that it makes it really easy to go through it. And then also, uh, one of the pieces is really how to think like a judge. Um, students recently did, I'll give this example, it was a, a, um, an essay on what's your favorite flavor of ice cream. And I said, listen, they don't really care about, you know, whether it's vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, butter, pecan. That's not what they're asking you. Although the it, correct answer is vanilla. Right. <laughs> it's a, right. But there's always a question behind the question. And, and when you learn that, that really, what are they asking, you know, um, that, you know, you need to connect it to your future or something about your past or how you're going to use the money and why you're the best candidate, they begin to think differently. And again, that's the same skill that, you know, if you're being um, interviewed for a job, you're, you're, you're able to think a little bit faster because you know, like they're not really asking me what it sounds like they're asking me, they're asking me something different. So in the course, we're not just finding, but when it comes to applying, I, I think one of the, the key pieces because students apply a lot of times, they say, well, I didn't win. And well, let's take a look at why you haven't won. And it a lot of the times it's because not knowing what to say or how to uh, pull together your package and what to include and what not to include. And really, what are they looking for? What's their mission? What's what's important to them? You know, why would they give you this money? And so um, the course is delivered through the membership site. So it's self-paced, you go through it, but then there's also the live component, which opens next week. We open it once we close the cart and then we all go through that part together to provide the extra support and the extra accountability. Cause I'm a mama with four kids. I know that sometimes, you know, they get busy and my oldest is 20, almost 24. So, you know, I find that that accountability is key. It just keeps them on track until they develop the habit of actually continuing to apply. And it just makes the difference because information is great. It's wonderful. But unless you internalize it and you develop the disciplines over time, then it can get lost in just life. And especially, you know, this time of the year when it's the peak scholarship time, you know, you're, you want your students to take advantage of that and to really begin to apply, especially for those, you know, you may have somewhat of a gap um, between what you your student has already won, what you're able to pay, and what's you know required from the school or due to the school. So um, now is a, a great time. So it's offered again the member the self paced course as well as the live component um, um, in the program. And then they do a couple of other little things that I, I like to talk about. One of the things that they do right up front is create their LinkedIn profile. Um, and I do this by design. 
Um, one way I like to communicate with them and I force them, you know, so we're posting scholarships in LinkedIn and we're com I'm communicating with them through LinkedIn because I want them to develop the mindset that, you know, I'm now shifting from high school student to college student. So less social, more networking and connecting. And um, it's just a great way to do a little bit more research on maybe the sponsor, the sponsoring organization. But it's a it, I just love it as a way to communicate, to get them comfortable with the platform so that, again, when they're on campus, you know, they're not just creating a LinkedIn profile for the first time when they hear about it through career services or their senior year of college, you know, when they're thinking about getting jobs. So um, it's just some of those extra pieces as well that I think are really important for our young people to do and to know. Yeah, I, that it's it's so much more than just hunting for scholarships. There's so many life lessons there. And um, you, you got that book again? Yeah, this big one? Yeah, I mean, if yeah. we're just interested in, if we're just interested in looking up all the scholarships, just go through that. Yep. But if you're actually, in, so if you're interested in in, in just, raw facts get that if you're interested in um really focusing and honing that search and also pack hunting to some degree with other like-minded people uh, and that's just one source and then web directories is just another and but we've got eight more that we share and we dive deeper into it so yeah it's great stuff stackingbenjamins.com forward slash scholarships uh by saturday um that's gonna do it, Pam. I think we did it. Hulk, we got some great questions. Yeah, Thanks, by the were way. Great. Yep. <laughs> Brian, Chibali, Leslie, uh, who else had Amanda had a great question. Paul was here dorking around. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't wait to see Paul again, by the way. Scott, uh, yeah. Thanks, Karen. Uh, thanks, Gertrude, for all the help. Um, that's going to do it guys for today for live Pam. I, I think we'll see you again in the fall, huh? We'll Sounds do this great. again. Yep, we'll do it again. Yeah. Big thanks to Pam for, for, for hanging out with us. Uh, just a couple things before I sign off as well. Uh, on Friday where we have a live show on a platform called Fireside and I'm super excited by it. You can, you can, uh, be in, not just in the audience, you can be on the podcast. And we had a lot of fun this week with our first one. We had, I think, probably five stackers that joined us live. It is difficult to find your way into, into that platform. I do know we also got some statistics on the number of people that were listening because you also can listen on our Twitter feed, on Facebook. Uh, you can listen on our Instagram feed. You can listen all over the place, but you can also be on the show. And if you want to do that uh, in our Facebook group, and in our um, uh, uh, on our Twitter feed, and if you uh, get the guide, the stacker stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacker our email, uh, we'll always post it in all three of those places. How you can uh, get in the auditorium and be a part of the show. So either mix it up with the roundtable, Paula Lennon OG, or whoever our guest is, uh, or uh, match up with them for the trivia, which you'll hear is, is pretty fun. I will warn you this. We're not good at live shows yet. Uh, we're decent at them, but we're not phenomenal at them. And, uh, but it's coming and I'm super excited. Once we get these basics down, I'm really excited about what Friday's, what Friday can, can, can bring to us. Also, finally, uh, like any good book author, I got, if, if, if you want to, buy the book, please uh, pre-order it. Stackybenjamins.com forward slash stack comes out December 28th. It is your super serious guide to modern money management. And uh, with Pam being here, I'll say this, that it is, it's a perfect thing for people just getting started. We start off with stacking your first Benjamin, then building a stack of Benjamins and then stacking Benjamins on top of your Benjamins. So, uh, we have, we have a lot of fun and it's my co-host, Emily Guy Birkin, who has a phenomenal sense of humor. And there are some inappropriate jokes in the book, um, which you should be aware of. And for some people, that's a selling point. Like they like that, but I'll tell you, they read like I wrote them and I didn't like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't write any of the genitalia joke. That's the jokes that are in the book. Emily wrote them, wrote them all, which is which was uh, was 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 pretty fun. There's also a lot of Star Wars nerdery uh, in the book. Uh, so anyway, uh, stackybenjamins.com forward slash stacked. And on a much more serious note, uh, it also is a great way to learn about money in a very, very 
uh, light, easy way for people that are just trying to learn what do I do next and have trouble staying engaged with this stuff. So if you like the entertainment, it is fantastic and absolutely care. And I am shoving Emily into the book early, early and often. Uh, if it weren't for Emily, though, this book wouldn't have gotten written because Emily was just fantastic to work with. And um, she's, you know, she's written five books. So, uh, but pre-orders are super important for us to get back to the point. Stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacked is how to uh, pre-order the book. And um, that helps us make uh, all the bestseller lists at the start and means more financial literacy, hopefully for more people. All right. Big thanks to Pam Andrews, the scholarship shark for joining us again. Stackingbenjamins.com forward slash scholarships. You've got three days left stackers. So we'll see you again next time back here from the basement. Bye-bye.